The finale of Inside Out 2 explained. Finally, yesterday was released the long-awaited sequel from Pixar, Inside Out 2, a story that explores the new emotions experienced by a girl who has just entered her teenage years. What happens when one new emotion suppresses the others? In this video, we will be explaining the ending of the movie Inside Out 2 and the message hidden in it. And for more videos of your favorite series and movies, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Welcome to the Oasis Geek. Before we continue with this video, I invite you to participate in our new House of the Dragon giveaway, in which we are offering a Funko Pop of one of the characters from the House of the Dragon. To participate, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel and comment on who is your favorite character from House of the Dragon and why. The winner will be announced on June 30th. Before we start with the analysis of the movie, we must recap what happened in the first installment as the emotions we saw in her childhood return in the sequel. This film focuses more on the emotions of the protagonist, a girl named Riley, and the emotions such as joy, anger, fear, and sadness. In the beginning we can see that the emotion of joy is the dominant one in the protagonist's life, but everything changes in Riley's life after her family moves to San Francisco. At that moment, the emotion of sadness begins to take control over Riley's life, but it is continuously stopped by joy, thus creating a conflict between the two, which negatively affects Riley's life. What we can observe on Riley is a grieving process that leads her to a state of depression, a very complex theme for a children's film. We were able to observe how in the film the existence of such vital memories is brought up, which shape one's personality, but that these memories can be affected by emotions, turning memories of happiness into memories of sadness, something that can be observed in people with depression. Depression is an illness that can affect a person's life, completely changing their behavior. From Riley's perspective, we could see how she was submerged in an absolute depression, where her memories of happiness were manifested with sadness. And the most important thing in the film is that at the moment when joy and sadness leave their stations, Riley falls into a state of emotional loss of expression, one of the most common states of depression. Many people have theorized that joy is actually the villain of the film. This could be explained by the words of psychoanalyst Melanie Klein. She proposed that depression develops due to a person's inability to release the feeling of the initial loss. At the moment when the person is unable to resolve a feeling of loss, other defense systems are activated, resulting in depression. This is exactly what we observed in the film. Joy constantly wanted to maintain control and would not allow Riley to express feelings of sadness, driving her into a state of depression and emotional loss. It wasn't until she allowed sadness to take control that Riley was able to express herself and move on. We can also find other allegories in the film, such as the character Bing Bong, who represents the imagination when we are young, which is lost over time. We could also observe that the clothes of this same character carry the representative colors of each emotion, but also carry an additional color, the orange color, precisely the color that presents the new dominant emotion in the second movie. Now what are the new emotions that appear in the second installment and what happens to Joy? As the film begins, Riley has just turned 13, marking the beginning of the teenage years, and Joy is still the dominant emotion, but that is about to change. Inside Riley's mind, we can see that friendship has taken a more prominent role in her life. As we can see represented in the difference in size between the family island and the friendship island. In this new stage of her life, the family island has become much smaller than it was, and the friendship island occupies a larger space in Riley's mind. Everything changes when Riley and her friends leave for a weekend away at a hockey camp, which would mark a transition from middle school to high school, and the opportunity to be chosen to play for the Firehawks high school hockey team. While on the way to the camp, her friends confess to her that they will be attending a different high school. This means 
Riley won't have her friends with her at this new school. This is when the new emotions appear. Envy, embarrassment, boredom, and anxiety. Throughout the entire movie, anxiety takes control of Riley's thoughts and suppresses Riley's childhood emotions by sending them deep into her mind, leaving Riley with only new emotions during camp. But anxiety, by suppressing joy and the other emotions, also gets rid of the belief system Joy had created for Riley, which repeats the thought, I'm a good person, on several occasions. Throughout her life, Joy had been in charge of taking care of the positive memories, and she would get rid of the other memories that made her feel negative emotions in an attempt to protect her, sending them to the deepest part of her mind where they would be forgotten. And this was Joy's biggest mistake, but we'll talk about that later. Now anxiety goes about creating new beliefs in Riley, constantly repeating that she is not good enough, which leads her into a panic attack after she receives a penalty in the game for committing a foul by not being a team player and thinking only of excelling because of the new belief anxiety had created. It is not until Joy, after a long journey to the back of Riley's mind to retrieve the belief system she had created, that she returns to the headquarters of Riley's mind and stops anxiety. In this new teenage phase, Riley doesn't know how to deal with these new emotions, and it isn't until anxiety tells Joy that she is right, that they can't choose who Riley is. At that point, Joy realizes that she had made a mistake in having created a belief system based on Joy only, and she again ditches the positive belief system she had created and allows all the memories and emotions, both positive and negative, to form Riley's new identity. It is not until Riley creates this new identity, accepting herself for who she is, with her good and bad moments, that she manages to recover from the panic attack and get back in the game. At the end of the film, Riley is waiting for an email that would confirm if she has made the Firehawks team. The last scene of the film shows Riley reading her email and smiling, suggesting that she has been accepted into the team. Whether she was accepted on the team or not doesn't really matter, because Riley learned a valuable lesson about what it means to be a team player and what it really means to grow up. But tell me, what do you think about all of this? Did you like the movie? And for more videos of your favorite series and movies, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You're on. The Oasis Geek.